Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back. Uh, mind this one, titanium. Patreon.com slash real macroeconomics and investing. Come on down, join us, subscribe, follow, like, support. All that good stuff. All right. Time to do some more debunking. All right. Why is debunk debunking so important? Uh, it's very important because there's so many schools of thought. And if you run around trying to read and understand all these theories all over the place, you're going to end up where you're trying to speak their language. And within the confines of those barriers, that box each economic theory comes up with, um, you try to argue with that linguistics you're going to never see the forest. So what you have to do is not compare one economic theory to another. Okay, What you have to do is go out, find uh, a brick, find one idea, test it against reality, and see if it holds up. If it does, good. Keep it keep it. If it doesn't, throw it away. Okay? Now, MMT um, is, uh, they're masters at linguistics. They're masters at putting the cart ahead of the horse. So the easiest way to debunk MMT is simply reverse what they say. That's it you'll get the vast majority of the things right. Just reverse it. For example, um, a government issues a currency, a tax credit. Now, why do they say tax credit? Why why do they use the word credit? Because credit implies value, Okay, that you are given value. Government cannot give you value of anything. So let's get it, let's get this down Pat, right now, straight out, the government is a custodian of the currency, of the medium of exchange. That's what government controls. Okay, They are the custodians of taxation. Make sure everybody does it the way the law is written. They are the ones that issue uh, little digits. In reality, they issue bonds. That's what printing means. You get a bond expansion not coins, bonds, and uh, through the Fed, they can also control the interest rate of those bonds, okay? But they're all custodians. The government doesn't have anything. Nancy Pelosi, Biden, Trump, all these people, they don't go out, work, and, hey, let me give you some free stuff. Here, take it. I got to go. I got to go back and work and, and produce something, and I'll come back. I'll give you some more free stuff. No, the government doesn't have anything. Okay? So, that's an axiom. It's a fact. So, those of you who wish to live off the government need to understand that the government lives off of you. Because the government doesn't have anything. Okay? So, uh, if you want to order a pizza, you don't have money. Okay? You, you're going to pull the money together from all your friends. Okay? And then you're going to go out and spend it. And you're going to get a pizza. And that's how you guys are going to eat pizza. Well, it's the same thing with uh, with governments. The government doesn't have anything. Okay, you got to pull the money together. So how can we deficit spend? Well, it's quite simple. We can deficit spend simply because there's sufficient amount of wealth that can cover that uh, deficit. So there's enough private sector savings and wealth clumped up in one little corner of the economy, sitting there idle, in savings, doing nothing, that the government can tap, recycle back into the productive economy where you and I and 95% of the population resides, spend it to achieve certain goals, whatever they may be. So when taxes are not enough, then at that point, you can go out into the private sector, borrow from them, and spend. 
but you have to revo reward those savers. And there's two ways a bond can reward a saver. The first one is to offer them a coupon on their bond, let's say two years, five years, 10 years, 30 years, whatever. You're gonna give them an interest rate, whatever that interest rate is gonna be, okay? Or, or you're going to entice them to buy bonds with bond depreciation where the bond is going to give you 0% interest or even negative, but the bond appreciation is going to be so high that you'll be making money through the increased value of a bond. Now, there's a law that says that the central bank cannot, cannot fund government. You cannot do that. Why? Because then you're going to end up in a scenario where the custodian of the currency of the medium of exchange is going to end up for political reasons giving out too many of these little digits and no bonds are required okay the private banks are going to create too much private money creation and then you're going to end up in a inflation slash hyperinflation situation because there's no way that the expansion of the monetary uh, base, the expansion of public debt, uh, and you don't even have to have debt, to be honest with you. The, the amount of spending that a politician can do, the economy can never keep up with it. Okay, It can't keep up with it. So ultimately, you, you end up in an inflationary environment. All right, so what does that mean? Well, let me, let me give you some stats. Since 2007 till today, we added $18 trillion, $18 trillion of public debt. $18 trillion of public debt. Okay? Do you know how much real GDP we got for that? $3.5 trillion. You know what the return on investment is on that? It's about 20%. That, my friends, is inflation. $14.5 trillion worth of inflation. Did you ever hear MMT say, wait, 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 hey, we're exceeding the maximum productive output of the economy of the real resources. Uh, just way too much printing. Uh, let's, let's, you know, let's calm down and let's stop printing. Ever hear that from anybody in MMT? No. And that's because they don't understand inflation. Uh, let alone know how to control it or create it. They, they're they oblivious to um, inflation. Now, this poor man, he doesn't know any better. He's a commoner. He has fallen for the circular logical fallacy of a cult that tells, the, that tells him that, hey, don't worry about it, we can print. We can print all the money. The government can print all the money that he wants. Don't worry about it. It's all good. He's fallen for it. And he believes it. So he comes out and starts making this video thinking that he's doing the public good. When in reality, he's causing harm. Not only to himself, but to the public that believes what he's saying. Remember, if you start talking their language in this box, you're never going to find reality. You have to take these barriers one by one and take it out into the real world and test them independently and see if they work, if they apply. If they don't, the theory is garbage. I just showed you that we printed $18 trillion in 13 years and we only got 3.5%, I'm sorry, $3.5 trillion of real uh, GDP growth. That is disastrous. That is the ultimate inflationary environment. The fact that CPI only measures the productive economy and not asset price inflation, which is a mistake, is wrong. It's masquerading what the real problem is. So let's get started and I'll stop and correct it. Chip Murphy. I want to talk about modern monetary theory. We've already done a video on the basics of modern monetary theory, but of course, 
Anything that introduces a major new idea in macroeconomics requires more explanation than can be done in a few minutes. It's not a major new idea. The not, deficit spending is not new. <laughs> That's been around forever and a, uh, and a day. Right? So that, there's nothing new there. One of the particular criticisms that many people have made of modern monetary theory. Yes, because many people are right. <laughs> Okay, it's not that many people are stupid and MMT is smart, right? And the word modern is again linguistic bullshit. They tried, they're, they're repackaging that, hey, free money for everybody. Yeah, don't worry about it. Venezuela, woo! Okay, that's not modern. <laughs> right? So there's a lot of linguistic bullshit fuckery that goes on with MMT. Okay is that it isn't concerned with inflation. And I find that quite astonishing because, if anything, I don't know a theory that is more concerned with inflation than modern monetary theory is. <laughs> okay, so obviously he doesn't know what the, Austrian, uh, the Austrians are. Austrians are the most concerned about inflation. And they, every single time, you know, there's a tick up, they come out of the woodworks and, oh, the world's gonna come to an end, inflation, inflation. Okay, so right there, obviously, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Let's just explain why this is an issue. What modern monetary theory says is that a government can create as much money as it wishes. With as much money as it wishes. As much, listen to that. As much money as it wishes. Woo! As much as you want. Don't worry about it. You're going inside of a buffet and you can have all of the food, the whole entire Bellagio buffet with crab legs and whatever that your heart desires. It's all yours, my friend, as much as you want. Okay? Let's listen. Without having to be worried about the amount of debt that it apparently owes, so long as there are real resources in the economy to put to use with the money that is going to be spent. So, you can go inside the Bellagio, the whole entire floor of buffet is yours, so long as it fits your stomach and you don't gain weight. That's what he just said. You may not understand it that way, but that's what he just said. As much money as it wants without worrying about that, poo, that debt stupid thing, provided there are enough real resources to maximize employment, then everything will be okay. Yep. We're going to eat as much as we want, limited to our stomach, but to the point where we won't gain an ounce of weight. Right. When there are no real resources left to spend on. In this case, when there's no more capacity in your stomach and you cannot eat another, you know, berry because you're going to gain weight, only under those circumstances where there's Nothing else left for the government to buy and there's max employment. Then modern monetary theory says that you either have to tax more to free up the resources for the government to buy or you will get inflation. So you're either going to have to tax more to free up the resources. OK, and or you're going to get inflation only under those conditions are you going to get inflation. Newsflash. We have high unemployment, okay, and we have inflation, hello, 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 yeah, so that's wrong in what MMT says. So I told you that MMT uses uh, circular logical fallacies, they use um, linguistic science, uh, and they also use uh, theories that are bullshit. Okay. And it says that inflation is not desirable. Ooh, it could not be clearer. Yeah. The issue is like that inflation. modern monetary theory that. says that if you are at or near full employment and you get inflation, if, then the if you're at full employment and you get inflation, because under only under those conditions can you get it, right? If you're in that point where you just ate to whatever your stomach can hold, but not to the point where you gained an ounce, but you are gaining an ounce now, well, guess what? Now you can throw up.
<laughs> Not stop eating, you throw up. Way to control that inflation is not using interest rates. So MMT, as we call it, is in conflict with conventional economics, which says interest rates are the way to control inflation. In yes, interest rates, stop eating. <laughs> okay, so why do we use interest rates rather than taxation? Does anybody know? Going once, twice, three times? I'll tell you why. Because the vast majority of money created in the world comes from the banking system. Loans create deposits. The moment you go out, you get a loan, and you're approved, that loan out of thin air is going to become a deposit in your account. That's where the vast majority of the money creation occurs. Now, that occurs not only in mortgages or cars right but in corporate bonds and many other aspects business loans whatever so that's why you have to raise interest rates what else what else well when you raise interest rates okay when the interest rates rise you challenge the bond you challenge the bond interest rate okay this is the fed fund rate okay and this is the 10 year and what happens is when you when you you raise the short term you are also raising you're also going to raise the 10 year more more often than not if it becomes in, inverted it becomes a whole other issue okay when the 10-year rises to, let's say, what inflation is, and let's say, uh, out of argument's sake, it's 4.2% like it is today. If you raise <laughs> interest rates to 4.2% unemployment, uh, I'm sorry, um, uh, interest, just to break even for the year, all right? You, you, you're going to issue uh, a bond that's going to, the bond is going to go for 4.2%. What's going to happen to the value of the, of the bond? It's going to fall. And the interest yield is going to rise to 4.2%. Okay, so the value of the bond is going to go down, but the interest rate will rise. If safe assets like bonds are giving you 4.2% interest, safe, and the stock market is giving you 2. Point, uh, whatever, 3%, what are you going to go buy? A risky asset like stocks that is only giving you 2.3 earnings yield or 4.2 of safe assets uh, in bonds, right? Why does that matter? Because that makes it, my friends, undesirable to go out and buy stocks, okay? And more, more desirable for you to go out and invest in the real economy. So bond prices start to fall. Stock market starts to fall. What happens to um, home prices? Well, for every 1%, rule of thumb, for every 1% that interest rates rise, a home price falls by 10%. Okay? So what happens to homes? Homes start to fall. All right? But this, what I'm showing you, what happens in the real world, it's too difficult to explain to a commoner every day. You can't sit here and be like, okay, let me give you a freaking lecture about how money works and why it interest rates and so forth. You can't do that. Your goal is not to educate people as an mm -er. Your goal is to get them to agree that deficits are good and they're going to benefit them, even though the last $18 trillion has only made them poorer and inequality worse. But magically, somehow, the next $28 trillion that we print, well, it's going to be different. And it's going to be more realistic. You see? Don't worry about inflation. Don't worry about it. What happens to savings when interest rates rise? Savings become more appealing for people. What happens to debt 
credit card debt, whatever. What happens to debt? Debt becomes undesirable. You much rather go out and save so you can spend more tomorrow than it is for you to borrow uh, and, and pay a high interest rate on. Savings, savings is deflationary. Okay? Savings is deflationary. Not inflationary. Not wanting to borrow as much is deflationary. Okay? How about companies that want to go out and borrow? They want to go out and borrow money at 0% interest rates. And do you think they want to do it at 4.2% interest rates to borrow? Which is going to be far more because it's a corporate uh, bond. Uh, depending on whatever. Anyways, it's, it's more. Do you think they're going to go out and borrow to buy back their own stocks and pay 4.2% interest when their profit margin, if they're lucky, is 4.2%? No. <laughs> that's, that's not the path to prosperity, right? Well, that's not the path to prosperity. That's That doesn't do anything, okay? Eventually, you're going to blow up. So it incentivizes you to go out and open more stores, uh, you know, gain market share. <laughs> you're going to fight in the open market for more profits. That's why they use interest rates. And it all started from the Fed fund rate right here. And look look at all these things that have been affected just from the Fed fund rate. This is why they do it. This is why they use interest rates. And that's stupid. This is, this, you can see that in the real world. You can verify it for yourself. But, but people don't know that. So the thing NFT is like, oh my God, I can have like all this free candy. I can become like rich and stuff. I don't have to work. I have a job guarantee. Yeah. And then the government will pay me. Yeah, because the government sucks. And they should pay me. Because I'm a victim. It's not the way it works. Instead, it says you tax more. You take the excess money that exists in the economy out of circulation and literally destroy it. You <laughs> oh, here we go with the literally it destroyed. Okay. Money printing. Money printing. Printing equals bond issuance. Okay. That's what it is. When you hear, oh, the government print money. No. The government issued bonds. So if you want to, quote-unquote, destroy uh, money, if you want to destroy money, what are you going to do? Well, if you're going to tax more, okay, you have to run a surplus. And with that surplus, you're going to go out and you're going to extinguish the bond. Okay? That's the only way you can destroy money extinguishing the bond that means that the tax surplus has to be repaid to the bond holder so I'm going to take you back to either stop eating or puke it up analogy okay if you want to run surpluses then uh, at that point you're gonna to have to puke it up why because you're going to go out and you're going to tax in an inflationary environment. You're going to target um, the rich, which is very, very popular. And the rich are going to go out. Right, so over here, th this is the rich with all their savings, a whole bunch of dollars. Okay. You're going to go out and you're going to tax them when the inflation is occurring in the productive economy here's here's where the problem is the problem is not the savings at this point okay so you're going to tax these people and you're going to take these dollars onto the um, feds balance sheet and whatever and then what are you going to do you're going to say well you know deficits are not that bad we threw up and now we're going to start extinguishing bonds but the problem is here. You didn't reduce the amount of money here. You didn't reduce the prices here. Okay? So what happens? Well, if you go out and you tax the rich, and they start selling 
bonds, stocks, real estate, commodities. They start selling everything because they're not they're not going to lose that money to taxation. They're going to take take their money and they're going to flee. They're going to say, "Here's your passport. Thank you very much. Made a lot of money. See you. Bye." Who are you going to tax now? You see, this is why no um, uh, rich area uh, has ever been sustained with a bunch of poor people. You need the rich, like it or not. So this novel idea that we'll just target Bill Gates and Buffett in taxation to give us the fiscal space to for the government to consume more, which means deficit spend more, means what? That they're just gonna put <laughs> just gonna pump more money in the productive economy. And that's not gonna cure inflation because inflation is going on in the productive economy. It's not gonna stop people from borrowing. Okay? It's not gonna do anything. It's gonna make it worse. And that's why they don't use taxes. Now, can you use some taxes? Yes, sure. That's you can definitely use. There's some element to taxation, especially you know, on the rich, whatever that can be used. But that's not the main way that you control the monetary uh, expansion. Okay, and if you don't pump those dollars, if, if those dollars are not pumped back into the productive economy, then guess what? You're going to pay off a bond, right? Because you're going to reduce deficits. Right, money creation, money printing. You're gonna you're gonna start to buy them off. Well, what happens when you buy uh, a bond from the rich? Well, the money goes back to the rich. So you're gonna tax the rich, so they can buy the bonds to give money back to the rich, and you're gonna control inflation. You see, it's it's complicated. I I, I understand. It's I can't fit it into a nice little meme. Tax the rich and we'll all be fine. Yeah, la, 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 la. I can't do it. Because that's not how the real world works. But I can teach it to you. I can show it to you. I can make you understand so long as you're willing to listen and you're, you're not, you know, just blinded with uh, uh, these uh, linguistic bullshit. So I always tell everybody, if you want to understand who are the beneficiary of uh, deficits, look at who owns the bonds. That's it. It's that simple. If it's not you, your friends, your family, if you guys are not running around with a bunch of bonds and savings, you are not the beneficiary of deficits. You are carrying the liabilities of those deficits okay and that's the way it works and if you don't think that's that's not the way it works go ask a Greek okay go ask a Greek all those deficits all that money creation who got taxed for it the rich no no <laughs> grandma that was making 400 euros a month and now is making 200 and she's supposed to pay for a house electricity food with 200 euros when she's 71 years old. Okay? Go ask the Cyprians. Anything above 100,000 was wiped out overnight. Didn't say anything to anybody, boom. Why? Because if they would have said anything, anybody that had more than $100,000 would have took their money and ran. Do you think the rich are going to keep their money in the Cyprian bank account? <laughs> of course not. So who's going to have their money in the Cyprian bank account? Somebody that just sold the house for 250,000 euros, right? They're going to put it in the bank account. You know, they're waiting to go find the ne next home, whatever, a business owner. Okay, small small business owner that has three, 400,000 in there, whatever. Okay, and guess what? They all got wiped out. Who owns the liabilities? You see, it's 95%. Who owns the savings? Top 5%. It's the way it is in real life, not on some spreadsheet, not on some academic paper. That's the reality of it all. Cancel its purchasing power by taxing more money out of the economy. Oh. Now, some people argue that isn't possible. Some people argue that governments wouldn't do that, although I have no idea why they make that claim, because governments have been quite willing to put up interest. 
He has no idea. He has no idea because he doesn't understand how the monetary system works. He doesn't understand how in interest rates works. He doesn't understand how money is created. He doesn't even know what money is. Well, I have no idea. <laughs> you don't have any idea. Because I'm not making fun of him. I shouldn't do that. But you get my point here, right? rates when it's been uncomfortable to do so to also control inflation with very little effect whereas this is a very direct and immediate impact particularly if done with something like value added tax but the point is value added tax oh my god yeah i'm going to i'm going to get bill gates darn it with value added tax yeah baby <laughs> Berkshire Hathaway Buffett i'm coming after you buddy and i'm going to give you a vat wow but MMT has got a complete theory of inflation. But what it does is a something complete novel. complete theory of inflation. They don't even know what inflation is. <laughs> My man, you're driving me crazy. I love you, but <laughs> you're clueless. Clueless. And people are, are listening to you. Spill this circular logical fallacy called bullshit. It refuses to say we must use the blanket instrument, interest rates, which penalise, for example, everyone with a mortgage, and instead says we should use a targeted instrument tax. It penalises everyone with a mortgage? What? What? You see, in his mind, he's like, well, you know, I don't want to be, uh, you know, pay more for my mortgage. Yeah, what about the guy that wants to buy a home that the home now is up in, in, in near 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 the moon in price what about that guy you don't want to pay more on mortgage you see people buy mortgages they don't buy the price of a home and that's why investing in real estate is garbage you can't make money i told you for every one percent that interest rates rise ten percent of the value of the home falls so you may have a fixed interest rate at whatever amount or a variable interest rate for that matter. That's why you don't want it to go up on your mortgage. Okay. But you're also screwing the next guy behind you who wants to go out and buy a home. Who has to buy at all time highs, which is exactly what's been happening. Did you know, by the way, that first of all, 42% of the CPI is housing and uh, home prices rose, I think, 17%. Okay? So even even if you take a third of that, of the 17%, and you say, you know, it's 6%. If you add the 6% to housing, okay, and you accurately reflect inflation, inflation, uh, home on inflation is 8%, not the two points that they added uh, to CPI this time around. I don't know how they come up with this two points when home prices are all-time highs and they rose 17% year over year. But uh, housing inflation is only up 2%. Yeah, right. Okay. Good luck with that. But people don't realize these things. They don't realize how CPI is constructed, what it's uh, measuring, how it's measuring it. ...to take inflation down. And I mean targeted because, in fact, what MMT says is that you might choose to increase taxes on wealth. You might uh, choose to increase taxes only on the wealthiest. You might choose to increase tax only on some goods and services and not all of them. So you would actually take into consideration when targeting inflation precisely who you want to have reduced their demand in the economy rather than penalise everyone. Now, what the point I'm making is MMT thinks inflation matters enormously and it also thinks that we can control it. All it says is that we control it in a way that is different to conventional economics that is fairer than conventional economics. It's not different and it's not fairer and it doesn't know how to control inflation and that's why we had 18 trillion dollars of deficits, asset price inflation, massive inequality during that time. And we only got 3.5% of real GDP growth. But he doesn't know that. He's uneducated in economics and the monetary system. And which I believe will be more effective because it can be targeted more precisely. To See, he's all, he, he's all hard up on the targeted, right? 
he he wants to tax the rich, tax the rich. He's falling for that stupid. He's going to go after Bill Gates with a VAT, value-added tax. Hey, buddy, go ahead. Go buy that Snickers bar. I'll, I'll get you yet. Oh, my God. Towards the causes of inflation. And as a consequence, I believe that modern monetary theory has an answer to inflation, which most people claim it hasn't, and which does instead make it a better instrument for control if we ever see inflation again. If we ever see inflation again. <laughs> the video was made july 29th oh my god is he eating his words today or what right and again the poor guy doesn't know any better i shouldn't be making fun of him but this is the way mmt tards think they come up with this crazy stuff and they don't realize what they're saying they think that you can only have inflation at maximum productive output and maximum employment and then only and then only can you get inflation yet here we are with inflation, commodity price inflation through the roof, uh, lumber is up 500 and whatever percent, uh, steel is up 250, uh, agriculture is up 100 plus percent, but there's no inflation. H housing is up 17 percent, but there's no inflation. If we ever get inflation, I don't know, maybe. If we ever, then don't worry about it. MMT will take care of it. They know how to deal with it. Wow. I'm Richard Murphy, thanks for watching. If you're interested in modern monetary theory or any uh, other topic Richard, around economics friend. that we're going to tackle, become a subscriber. please <laughs> click the subscribe button below. Yes, click the subscribe button to, you know, uh, brainwash yourself. Anyway, that's it, guys. Uh, very painful to listen to this because I know he means well. I know he's trying for a better future for himself and his kids and the rest of us. I know it. But he's just not educated enough. And MMT is fooling him with their Trojan horse of linguistic bullshit, circular logical fallacies into this cult that is only going to make things worse, not better. Not better for anybody. And you're going to see, today is the date, market, you're going to see inflation continue to rise. And you are all going to pay for it when MMT was telling you the whole entire time how are we going to pay for it? How are we going to pay for it? <laughs> oh, that's so stupid. How are we going to pay for it? Well, now you know who is going to pay for it and how. You through inflation. The inflation that MMT does not understand that they only use as a plug in their hollow theory. Just to, you know, stave off criticism. That's it. So... If you want to understand real macroeconomics and investing, if you want to understand how to apply that into the real world, if you want to know how to figure out what somebody's saying, if it's true or not, then come down to patreon.com slash real macro. I'll be more than happy to teach it to you. All right, guys, that's it. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great night, day, morning, great week, great month, great year. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.